All right, let's get into this. So I was just trilling. I was trilling. I was chilling, you know, going on YouTube, doing my thing. I got a lot of like fight videos on it, whether it's like boxing, UFC, or like what if fights. And I saw something from a YouTuber named GJ, DJ Scribbles, I think. It was pretty good, to be honest. I enjoyed it. He thinks kind of like I do. You know what I mean? Like a what if, could you do this? Could you not do this? Like how would it work out? I kind of think like I have, I guess, stupid ass thoughts like that and shit. And the video kind of encapsulated me, like encapsulated. And, and I was like, I was, it was a good ass video. It was like, could you beat the animatronics like a fist fight? You know what I mean? And that was a good question. He, he certainly thinks to think you can. Um, I just wanted to come to a conclusion myself. I'm gonna use like some points that I got from his video, others that like I, I don't so much agree with, uh, but we'll see how it goes. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna set up the, the scenario. If you don't get the right scenario, if we're not all on the same page, none of this matters. So uh, what we're gonna think is you're fighting one of them at a time. You're not fighting all the animatronics at once or like four at once or five. You're not gonna win that. They're, you're, you're not that, like, trust me, you're not winning that. Uh, it's totally unfair. <laughs> we'll discuss fighting against like uh, Freddy Fazbear as he's the most standard of all the animatronics. And we're going to assume his stats measure up with the likes of the other characters like Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, etc. With the exceptions of other anomalies such as Balloon Boy or DJ Music Man. Because either it will be like rather feasible or for, in terms of the former or like completely impossible. Completely impossible in terms of the latter. Because uh, like Balloon Boy is like really small, I think he's like forty pounds or something, and DJ Music Man is the size of a building complex, so <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, so let's get into it. These robots are in the games. I think they're said to be built like around the nineteen eighties, but they're like impressive pieces of machinery, even in terms of like today's robotics. They're crazy. Uh, they've shown great, they've shown good speed, they've shown durability, uh, a large uh, battery time, excluding like security breach with their like um, regular recharges, uh, and most impressively, their strength. They have crazy strength. Uh, so let's go into each of these points individually. Uh, in terms of speed, Foxy was shown running to the security room, estimated to be around like 11 miles per hour. This is also corroborated uh, with a Steam community post, which they dug into in the code, I believe, to find like. Uh, the speed of each of the characters in Security Breach as well as like their AI behaviors which also corroborated like roughly around 11 miles per hour. Uh, in comparison, the average healthy young person can run about 15 miles per hour which is faster than the animatronics uh, but the animatronics do not seem to get exhausted or run out of power as they were able to function for hours without needing to recharge themselves obviously minus like the Security Breach ones. Uh, but they also have a very powerful leap, able to cl close like a very big different distance as seen from like the FNAF 2 game by jumping towards you. So we gotta take all that into account. Uh, the animatronics are quite durable, uh, made out of a pretty hard material. They weigh a lot. Uh, Freddy weighs like 370 pounds. The animatronics from Chuck E. Cheese like aren't even half that weight, uh, but they're, they're, they're made out of something durable. They're very heavy pieces of machinery. Uh, the jumping ability is also quite impressive in terms of durability since it takes a lot of force to jump that distance and they receive like, seemingly they receive no damage from doing so. Uh, they aren't destructible. William Afton has dismantled them before, uh, so they're not like, like unbeatable. Uh, nonetheless, these are like the same guys that are somehow still kicking inside of Molten Freddy after the giant fire from Ultimate Custom Night. Uh, the animatronics are strong crazy strong this is their most like admirable feats uh, i won't look at the books because i don't think anyone cares and i don't like reading uh but but there are statements of like foxy like breaking down metal lock doors and like throwing whole ass arcade machines uh but we're just gonna look at the games even from their games their strength is still very prevalent again we're gonna go back to the leaping and fnaf 2 they're able to cross the entire room with the pneumatics in their legs, which requires a lot of force. The pneumatics is a system which obviously runs out through their whole body. They can produce the same like force within their arms, assume, assuming so. Uh, meaning getting kicked or punched with these uh, with that much force is will be like very damaging you. Uh, however, that all pales in, to, in comparison to their like trump card, which is their bite. Uh, we're gonna have to look at the FNAF 4 game where Freddy, uh, Freddy, oh no, Fred Bear, sorry, kills the crying child by crushing his skull when he was put in his mouth. Uh, that's an impressive feat of strength since crushing a, a human skull 
requires anywhere from 500 to 1,000 PSI to crush a human skull, uh, at least from what I was able to find online. Uh, essentially, if any part of you is caught within their mouth, consider that part gone. Uh, and if it's your head, it's GG's, you're dead. Uh, <laughs> that being said, the animatronics aren't invincible. I mentioned earlier that William Afton was able to trick them, catch them off, hard, uh, off guard and dismantle them. Um, it would be a little disingenuous to say you could do the same as William Afton since he was able to perform like impressive feats during the mini games, but that just might be because of the lack of information we can see from the 8-bit style mini game. Uh, but aside from all that, William Afton is a genius, smarter than the average person, pr like probably smarter than like most people. Uh, he's like, he was either like a main, contrib uh, main contributor in lending a hand in building the animatronics or was like the sole engineer for these animatronics. Uh, and we can see that like evidence by sister location, that was his operation, giving him much more like inside information on how they function and how to dismantle them, at least to like a much greater extent than any of us would have normally. Uh, but we can utilize common knowledge as well as physics to see how well, what could we do to win in these kinds of situations. So let's get like the, the normal shit out of the way first. So the animatronics, as I mentioned earlier, run on a pneumatic system, which means gas is pressurized and unpressurized, which acts, uh, which acts on pistons, allowing for linear movement. This is how real life animatronics, like the ones that Chuck E. Cheese run, gra the gas has to obviously travel to, through tubes within the animatronic to reach their required destinations. Gashing the tubes or somehow releasing the gas within the, within the system uh, will stop all movement and you basically want due to mobilization. Joints are also a big weakness such as shoulders, elbows, knees, and hip joints. Somehow being able to lock them, uh, remove the connection points between the joints would, rather, would render them immobile, also giving you the win. Unfortunately, I've had to look at uh, the models for Freddy in order to do some of the things I'll mention later. And there's actually no visible sign of the tubing for his pneumatic systems or any like easy way to access his joints either. He's pretty well concealed and you'd have to do some crazy digging or get like real close and in there to be able to like do anything to them. As we mentioned earlier, we don't wanna get close to these guys. So <laughs> that's probably gonna be an issue. Uh, but there are um, like way more unfeasible options to beat them. Uh, this is like somehow shorting their circuitry. This could be done with like an EMP or somehow shoving him in a large body of water. But the chance of you deploying either of these methods are even more realistic than you like reaching inside and like pulling out a tube, uh, a tube or something. Or just like Garo versus Genos, like grabbing his arm and ripping his <laughs> arm from his joint elbow. <laughs> it's, just, it's just so unlikely that's, that's gonna happen. Um, but life on the line, you have to do something. What should you do? If you're in the open area, like a field or something, I guess you can try and run away. You're, you are faster than them if you like run like at the same speed as an average uh, person. Um, you could outrun them, maybe gain a lot of distance, maybe even escape, you know what I mean? Uh, but if you're like in an area where you can't escape, like a building that's locked or whatever, uh, running is probably the worst thing you can do because he's around your same speed and he doesn't get tired. If you get tired and have to stop, which eventually you will, he's gonna kill you. Uh, 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 fighting being your last option should be done right and carefully. There's no need to be super aggressive, waste all your energy at the beginning to try and like damage him. It's unlikely that that's gonna happen. You're just gonna get gassed out again and also die. <laughs> um, you wanna have like an outbox or fighting style, which if you're not like familiar with boxing or UFC, it's essentially like keeping your distance while you're fighting, biding your time essentially. That's all you wanna do. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's unclear that if your attacks can do any lasting damage. So we want to buy as much time as we can, either to figure out what to do or even to recuperate. Uh, something that DJ Scribble said is, could you knock them over? And he believes, uh, he believes that you can. Uh, so I wanted to double check this and I actually calculated, I calculated the tipping force required to knock him over if you hit him in the chest. Uh, so I, I looked over his stats online his average height was about six feet. His weight was like 370 pounds. Uh, I also had to measure the length of his feet in order to perform the calculations. So I, I, used his, I used the model of him I, I used online. It corroborated his height length by his like feet length and found the percentage. And I found that his foot length, is actually he has big ass feet. He's got 15 inch feet. 
That's like the same as LeBron. LeBron has like a 15, like a shoe size of 15. Like he's, he's got massive feet. Uh, but yeah, I, um, I calculated uh, how much force it would take to knock him over. Uh, and you can see that here. Uh, it takes a minimum of 229 newtons of force to his chest to knock him over. Uh, you, if you want to look at it, pause the video. You can see the assumptions I made to calculate this. I think they're all pretty reasonable. Um, but that's about, that's the minimum. If you have to 229 newtons of force or greater to be able to knock him over. Now we have to know, can a human punch um, produce that much force? I use two methods to kind of figure this out. I used a couple of assumptions for those either. I used like the average PSI method and I also used um, like a, a FMA method. Uh, regardless, I for the punch, I assume that you're able to put like your whole body weight behind that punch. I use like average values for all of that. Um, but even with like the less or the lowest average I got, it was slightly over 1000 Newtons, which is still much greater than uh, the required amount you need to knock him over, which means that you are, and your kicks obviously do like a little bit, you know, do more force than that. They also give you like a distance advantage, but they will tire you out more. So punching is probably the way to go. Uh, this is a very good strategy. If you're careful not to get grabbed while knocking him over, that's probably your best bet because it takes him time to, it gives you time to do whatever you want to do. Uh, DJ Scribble uh, mentioned in his video that if you knock them over, maybe they don't have the systems required to be able to pick themselves back up. And if you believe that, then boom, you've won the fight. You've immobilized him. He's on the ground and he can't get, get back up, just leave. You know what I mean? Uh, but I, I don't believe that. If you don't believe that, which I personally don't believe, I think he can like get up and he, he probably will get up. We're gonna have to somehow like continue how to win this anyways. Uh, well, while he's on the ground, you're still gonna need to find a way to damage him. Uh, his legs are unprotected while he's knocked over because his upper body's here, his lower body is, is unprotected. Finding a way to damage his legs or maybe using that time to be able to lock or uh, unscrew his hip joints, that would, dis this, that would dismantle or stop, completely remove like the lower half of his body out of the equation. Um, if you can do that, you're in a pretty good position. If you're not able to do that, either by like he just gets up too fast or there's just a lot of people like aren't actually technical, technical enough to be able to remove hip joints or damage hip joints. Uh, if you can't remove or destroy his, uh, his legs, there's not much you can do. At that point, it's, you're kind of over a sense. You can't actually damage him with your bare fist. We've actually, I calculated this using Roxanne, which survived being hit by a straight go-kart, uh, which I used a real life go-kart. I used the BSR go-kart uh, with, with a mass of 120 kilograms, a top speed of 37.6 meter per second. And I use the assumed contact time, the same as like a punching contact time. Uh, you can see the calculations here. Uh, but I calculated the force uh, that Roxanne with took to be over 15,000 newtons, uh, which is far greater than anything you can produce. So this, and like Roxanne was still kicking afterwards. I mean, yeah, she was knocked out, lost her eyes, but bro, she's back up doing some crazy shit. Um, but either way, you're, you're not producing that much force to, <laughs> that much impact force to knock them out or destroy them. Um, so there's not much you can do. If they stand up, it's over. Going back to the method, if you were somehow able to remove their legs or dismantle their legs, all you'd be left with is the top half of their body. But now you've run into the same issue as the previous one as with your bare fist or your bare legs, you can't really do that much to damage them. They can withstand like a lot of force, a lot of impact force, more than even probably your strongest kick is probably able to produce. Um, you're gonna have to rely on the environment, which kind of goes against the scenario we've mentioned previously since we said in a fist fight. As I mentioned here, you can't, you can't produce enough force to fist fight them. You're not gonna break them. Uh, at this point, removing their arms or legs is very risky. They can probably grab you, <laughs> unlike their legs. Knocking them over won't provide you any sort of, um, will likely not provide you any sort of assistance anymore uh, since they could grab you if you do anything, try to get close or hit you. It's, you need to use something from the environment to hit them or damage them from a distance. This could be using things like chairs, metal bars, bats, anything that hits hard, essentially. 
you could probably do like that and then you probably could like produce some severe damage uh to weaken the animatronic or like even destroy it if it's like hard enough you can hit it with it hard enough um and then if you can do that then you've won you not in the fist fight you didn't win the fist fight but you survived <laughs> Uh, the wind condition, while possible, assumes a lot, such as you not being hit or grabbed before being able to knock them over, uh, being able to destroy or dismantle their legs, and even still, you would need external objects to be able to do any real damage or break them. Of course, if you're using external objects, you won't have to dismantle their legs anyway. If you have a bat, you can still like beat the shit out of them while they have their legs standing up and things. Dismantling their legs just helps a lot. Uh, but even then, more often than not, at least in an actual fist fight, you're not winning. You're not winning the fights against the animatronics from FNAF as they are rather quick, durable, strong, and will certainly outlast you in terms of stamina. The quicker, yeah, you just want to do this as quick as possible before they tire your ass out. Anyways, that's just what I think. What do you think? Let me know if you agree or disagree. If you disagree, like you think you just smack DJ Music Man with your dick and make him cry, all the power to you, bro. <laughs> also, if you enjoy, like, and subscribe. Other than that, that's all I got for you. So, uh, peace out.